At the peak of their success in the 90s, Eternal were the first all-female group to sell over a million copies of an album in the UK, but their chart-topping fame came with as many downs as ups. Originally made up of sisters Easter and Vernie Bennett, Louise Redknapp, and Kel Bryan, the girl band was known for their debut album Always and Forever and hit single Stay. Then in 1995, during the height of their career, Louise announced that she was unexpectedly leaving the group to pursue a solo career and her legion of loyal fans were heartbroken. The Naked Star said at the time she felt miserable and homesick whilst on tour, and the trio admitted they were gutted by her decision to quit. It was alleged they fell out over who got to perform lead vocals and there was rumors Louise was dumped from the band as its only white member, with some quarters suggesting Eternal's chances of breaking America would be improved as a trio with Easter, Vernie, and Kel. However, Eternal's management denied this was the case. It was also suggested Kel leave to form a duo with Louise, which she stated she did not wish to do. The band continued to succeed, though it soon became apparent that not all was well behind closed doors. At the time, Vernie said, it was us coming from caterpillars to butterflies, but Kel said, it was devastating, no one could replace Louise. I did struggle, I knew Louise's reasons for leaving, but they weren't mine. For me to stay it would have to be a financial reason. Then during the big reunion show in 2014, she said, some of our most successful times were after Louise. It was pretty miserable, not even a hello or good morning. I don't think their, Easter and Vernie's, behavior was kind and that was challenging. In our lives there was so much going on and we never communicated, I was aware something had to give along the way, but it just wasn't going to be me. Looking back, Eternal's former manager Jazz Summers, recalled the horror of working with the pop band who he described as beachy tyrants. In his autobiography Big Life, which was released in 2013, he described working with them as an experience that effing haunts me, and said he reluctantly agreed to be their manager back in 1998. In an excerpt from his book, which was published on X, formerly known as Twitter, he recalled the sisters' ridiculous demands, including two separate Rolls Royce limos so they didn't travel with each other, and hair extensions flown in from America. Legendary hitmaker Jazz, who passed away in 2015 at the age of 71, felt he had to resign in 1999. He shared in his book, the public had decided they didn't like them. It was simple. They'd been tyrants on TV and beachy in the press. He then shared his resignation letter in his book, in which he heaped praise on lead singer Easter, but joked he would pray for her sister Vernie. Then the drama started back up again last week when it was revealed Louise and Kel pulled out of a potential Eternal reunion tour earlier this year following a disagreement with former bandmates Seaster and Vernie regarding the LGBTQ community. The Mirror revealed on Saturday how Eternal had planned to reunite and tour next year, but trouble hit when the singing siblings reportedly refused to play the festivals, objecting to their allegiance with the trans community. Their objections led to Louise, alongside bandmate Kel, abandoning the plans in June and leaving the sisters to tour as a duo. A source said, Louise, Kel, Easter and Vernie had all signed up to perform a huge nationwide tour next year, culminating with a huge show at pop festival Mighty Hoopla, which is loved by the gay community. However, Esther and Vernie's reps have accused Louise of throwing the sisters under the bus as the band's original manager, Dennis Inglesby said, Louise and her team have thrown them under the bus and everyone is totally appalled at their bullying behavior by totally misrepresenting the situation to suit their own agenda. 
He claimed the sisters sent an email to Louise's camp saying they loved playing Pride and the ethos of the event. Dennis added that the dispute is nothing about gay rights, and that Vernie and Easter have played numerous LGBTQ gigs. He said, Vernie said she had some concerns about the Pride movement being hijacked, and she is not alone, but this has now been weaponized against her, with Louise's team trying to get her cancelled.